Lesson 1, I will decompose fractions as a sum of unit fractions using tape diagrams. So we have some vocabulary words that we've already used before. I want you to take a look at the word decompose. We've decomposed when we were subtracting. We've also decomposed whenever we were dividing. So decompose means to take something and to break it down into smaller parts. We're going to be doing that with some fractions. Sum means the, the answer to an addition problem. And we used, used tape diagrams whenever we were doing some problem solving. Well, today we're going to use a tape diagram to represent a fraction. So you're going to need a couple of things from your binder. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need this piece of paper right here. It says Lesson 1, three strips of paper. You're going to need some scissors, and you're going to need to cut these three strips of paper apart. If you don't have any scissors, you can come and see me and borrow some of mine. And you're also going to need your math journal. So go ahead and get your math journal ready for today. We're going to be folding some paper to represent fractions, and we're also going to be writing some addition sentences in our math journal. So you're going to need all of those things, a pencil, your three strips of paper, and your math journal. Whenever you're ready, come back. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take one strip of paper, and I want you to take a look at it. That one strip of paper represents your whole one whole piece of paper. So what number would represent that strip of paper? It would be the number one. When you see any number, like when you see this number three, this represents three whole something. In this case, it represents three equal parts. When you see this one, it means one whole. So this is one whole strip of paper. I want you to fold your strip of paper so that you have three equal parts. So you're going to want to take this side and fold it in on top of this one and this one on top of this one so that you have three equal parts. Think about it before you fold it to make sure that when you unfold it, you have three equal parts. Take your colored pencils or crayons, just don't use a marker, just something that you can shade really quickly because I don't want you spending 20 minutes coloring. Just take a colored pencil or a crayon. Again, if you don't have any crayons or colored pencils, come and see me, I'll let you borrow some. And I want you to shade two parts. Now, you have two out of three shaded. So let's draw in your math journal a number bond to represent this whole decomposed into three units of one third. So in your math journal, I want you to, well this actually isn't a number bond, I want you to draw this tape diagram. And I want you to notice that the top is labeled one because this is one whole, and then we labeled one part one third. So each part is one out of three or one third, okay? Now, <clears throat> Let's think of this as an addition sentence because remember we said we were going to decompose a fraction as a sum of unit fractions. So we're going to start our number sentence with one equals and we're actually going to be writing this in our math journal. So one equals what? Well actually one equals one third plus one third plus one third. I want you to write this in your math journal. Now let's think of another way that you can decompose this whole into thirds without it being one third plus one third plus one third. You could also use this number sentence. It's one equals one third plus one third plus one third, but notice we have parentheses around two of the one third. So when you see parentheses in any number sentence, that means that you're going to do that first. So how would it change it if I added these together? Instead of being one third plus one third plus one third, it would look like this. One equals two thirds plus one third. So this is another way to say one and we decompose it into two thirds plus one third. Okay. All right. Now <clears throat> we're going to take the other two strips of paper that you have left and I want you to take one strip of paper and I want you to fold it into four equal parts. So you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again so that when you open it you have four equal parts. Really think about it before you fold it. And then I want you to just lightly shade all four parts. And then I want you to take the other strip of paper, fold it into four parts too, but I only want you to shade three out of four parts. When you're finished doing that, come back. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven parts shaded, but you still only have four parts per hole. So how much is shaded? Seven fourths are shaded because even though there are eight parts, this is not our whole. This is a whole and this is a whole. There are four parts in a whole. So you've got four out of four and then you've got three out of four. So you have seven fourths. Now I want you to write seven fourths in your math journal and this time we really are going to draw a number bond to represent the two parts and their sum. Ok, 
Okay, so we've got 7 fourths. This is our whole, so that's going to be at the top of our number bond. And then we're going to divide this into our two parts. We've got 4 fourths over here, and then we have 3 fourths over here. So 7 fourths, and we have 4 fourths plus 3 fourths. Okay? All right, now let's think of this as another, another way. You're probably thinking this. You're probably thinking, well, Miss Jeans, 4 fourths is the same as something else. Were you thinking that 4 fourths is the same as one whole? Because it is. We had one whole part shaded. So let's draw another number bond right next to this one. But we're going to rename 4 fourths as one whole. So it's going to look like this. 1 and 3 fourths instead of 7 fourths is equal to 1 and 3 fourths. So instead of it being 7 fourths, we said 1 whole and 3 fourths. This is a mixed number is equal to one hoe and three fourths. Now right underneath that we're going to write one more number sentence to represent this number bond. So we've got one hoe plus three fourths equals one and three fourths. Okay? So we're going to do a little bit more practice with this in our number sentence. You don't have to keep those strips of paper. You can just put them in your math journal for right now if you want to go back and reference them. But go ahead and get out your um, problem set. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and write your name at the top, and you're going to see that they have some tape diagrams that they've already drawn, and they've already labeled them. And you can see this represents one hole. This hole has been divided into three parts, so they have one equals one-third plus one-third plus one-third, and then here's our number bond. Because it says we have to draw a number bond, we have to write a number sentence, and they did the first one for us. It's always nice whenever they do the first one, because we can always look at that as an example to see what is expected. All right, so let's take a look here at B. They already did number one for us, and they've already labeled the top. This is one hole. When I go through and I look at this, they have divided this hole into one, two, three, four, five parts. So each of these equals one fifth. And then underneath this um, tape diagram, you can see they have one part here, and then over here they have three parts here. So we're going to label this one one fifth. And then this one's going to be three fifths. That is a 5. So we're going to do just like they did over here and make this our number sentence. So I'm going to say, this wouldn't be one whole though, right? This would actually be 4 fifths equals 1 fifth plus 3 fifths. Because we're not going to do this part right here because it's not shaded. Now over here we have some room to do our number bond. So our whole is not 1 this time, it's 4 fifths because that's how much is shaded. And we're going to decompose that into... 1 fifth and 3 fifths. Okay, so let's take a look at number at C. So they've divided this into 1, 2, 3, 4 parts. So each of these is 1 fourth. So all together, how many fourths do we have? We have 3 fourths. So 3 fourths equals 1 fourth plus. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. And our number bond would be 3 fourths. And then we're going to actually have three fractions here, just like they did the example. And each of these is going to be 1 fourth. See if you can't do D all by yourself and then come back. If you get it wrong, you can just erase. If you get stuck, you can always press play, but just try to do it by yourself. Okay, so when I count, I see that these are equal to sixes but they have two together. So this would be two, six, and then this would be two, six. All together I have four sixes is equal to two, six plus two, six. And then my number bond would look like this, four, six, and then I'm gonna decompose this into two, six, oops, two, six, and two, six. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so for E, See if you can't do this one by yourself and then come back. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. So this would be two eighths, two eighths, two eighths. All together I have six eighths, which equals two eighths plus two eighths plus two eighths. And my number bond would look like this, six eighths. And I'm going to break this down into two eighths. 2 eighths and 2 eighths. 
Okay, so now when you get to F, it's a little bit different because you're going to notice that the whole thing is not one whole. This is one whole, and then we have this extra part. This is like the two strips of paper that we had. So they took one strip of paper, and they put it into four parts. So that means each of these equals a fourth. Now, if we've got one, two, three of them, that means that we have three fourths, and then this is one fourth, and then this is one fourth. So how many fourths would that be all together? That would be one, two, three, four, five fourths. So I've got five fourths is equal to three fourths plus one fourth plus one fourth. When I do my number bond, I'm actually going to do this as a mixed number. I have one whole and one fourth, so I'm going to say one and one fourth. But now this isn't broken down into, into a whole like our three strips of paper was, and I'm kind of running out of room, so bear with me as this gets tiny. All right, so I'm going to have three fourths, and then I'm going to have one fourth and one fourth. Okay, so hopefully you can read that. All right, so see if you can't do this one by yourself. This one's a little bit different, just like the last one that we did, because we have more than one whole. If you get it wrong, you can always erase. It's okay. You can come back, and, and we'll fix it together, but try to do it by yourself. All right, so when I look at my hoe, the hoe has been divided into three parts, so that means each of these represents a third. If I have two of them together, that would be two thirds, and then this would be two thirds, and then this would be one third. So all together I have two, four, five thirds. So I have five thirds is equal to two thirds plus two thirds plus one third. All right, so let's do our number bond. Okay, so I'm going to do this as a mixed number. Okay, so I actually have one and two thirds all together. And I'm going to decompose that as two thirds. Two thirds and one third. Okay? All right, now let's go down and look at the last one. So, again, try to do this by yourself. The worst thing that happens is you get it wrong. Big deal. Erase it and you can do it with me, but try to do it by yourself. All right, so here's the hoe, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. So that means each of these represents one eighth, but I've got two of them together, so this is going to be two eighths. Here I have two of them together, so this is two eighths. This is two eighths. This is one, two, three, four eighths, and this is one eighth. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven eighths. So 11 eighths equals 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 1 eighth. Okay, so again, when I do my number bond, I'm going to do this as a mixed number. I've got one whole, and then I've got 1, 2, 3 eighths extra. So I've got one whole and 3 eighths. Then I'm going to have to draw five number bonds. I'm going to try to draw these bigger so that I can make them big enough so that you can read them. It's nice to have all this room. All right, so I've got two eighths, two eighths, two eighths, four eighths, and one eighth. Okay? All right, now we get to draw and label our own tape diagrams this time. Okay, so we have our hole. So you're going to very neatly draw a rectangle. I'm going to cheat a little bit because it's hard for me to draw a nice neat rectangle with this pen. All right, so here is our hole, right? So let's go ahead and label this one hole. Put your one up there. And then we have to divide this into six equal parts. Okay, they can't be one, two, three, and then one gigantic part. So the easiest way for me to do this is to divide it into half. And then I'm going to take each of these halves and divide it into three parts. Okay, so there's thirds. And then over here I'm going to do this. Now I should have six parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to, since these are all divided into six, all I have to do is just do one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six and one, six. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we should go back and just lightly shade these. Again, don't, if, don't shade these so dark that you can't see where you separated them. And what I mean by that is don't do like this. If you do it like this, then you can't see where you separated them and you can't see how many parts there are. So it's better if you just lightly shade on the inside. 
Okay, so let's try B. All right, so we're going to draw a hole like this, and then we're going to label it one hole. So let's go ahead and label it at the top one. This time we're going to divide this into five parts. Okay, so this would be two, three, four, and five. You'll get much better at decomposing these as after you draw a tape diagram. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And I have four fifths. So I'm going to shade four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to look at how they decomposed it. They have one fifth, so this time I am going to use little brackets. Last time I didn't because they were all the same. And then they did two fifths, so we're going to go ahead and do two fifths. If you can't make this little fancy mark, you can always just do like this. Okay? And then one fifth. Okay? See if you can't do C by yourself. I think this is kind of fun getting to draw these tape diagrams. Okay, so let's come over here and let's draw another tape diagram. If you feel like you can do this one by yourself, go for it. All right, so we're going to divide this into eighths. When I divide these into eighths, I usually divide it into half. And then I go ahead and divide my half into half. So now I have fourths. And if I'm going to make this eighths, if I go here, through here and divide every one of these in half, I'll have eight parts, and they end up looking more even. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have seven eighths, so I'm going to shade seven. One two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you're shading these, don't worry about getting a crayon or anything like that. Just use your pencil and just lightly shade them. Don't spend five or ten minutes shading or you're going to look up and your whole class period is going to be gone and you only did like two or three fractions. Just lightly shade them and move on. All right, so we decompose this into three eighths, three eighths, and one eighth. So we're going to do three eighths, and then we're going to do three eighths, and then we're going to do one eighth. All right, so now this one you're going to notice we have more than one hole. So this is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to. I'm going to make it a little bit longer, okay? Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is you're going to notice that these are all going to be eighths. So, we're going to have 11 parts, but they're actually going to be eighths. So, here's what I'm going to do. This is going to be my hole, just like this, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and label this one hole. And then I'm going to divide this into eighths, just like I did the last one. So I'm dividing it into fours, and I'm going to go here and divide each of these into halves. So now I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make three more. So that now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they should all be pretty close to the same size because these are all eighths. So they should all be the same size. So you're going to come in here, and you're going to shade these. And then we're going to label them the way that they decompose them. Okay, so we've got seven out of eight. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make one big bracket that takes up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is seven eighths. And then I'm going to do one eighth. And then I've got three eighths. And that equals eleven eighths, or one and three eighths. Okay. All right. So let's do E. So let's go ahead and draw our tape diagram. So you're going to notice that this one's just like the last one that we did. It's more than one hole. So we're going to make this one. Let's go ahead and label our hole. Let's make this one hole. Okay, and then we've got to divide this into ten parts. I'm going to divide it in half first, and I'm going to divide each half into five parts. So this would be two, three, four, five. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do the same thing here. Two, three, four, five. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I'm going to divide these into, 
I actually made these a little bit too big. But now I've got two more. So this is my 10, and then I've got two more. So now I've got 12 tenths. 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I'm going to shade all these. Now, I don't want you to have to sit and watch me shade these, so I'm actually going to just use my highlighter. I'm going to come through and just shade these really quickly. But you can use your pencil to just lightly shade. Make sure that you can still see the divisions, though, in your tape diagram where you divided them, okay? All right, so now let's go through here, and we're going to group six of them. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is six tenths. And then I'm going to group four of them. And this is four tenths. And then I'm going to group two of them. So I've got two tenths. Okay? All right, so now let's do F. We're going to do 15 12. So if I'm going to make 12 parts, I'm going to make sure that my tape diagram is big enough that I can, I can make my parts readable. Okay, so don't make a teeny tiny tape diagram. All right, so these are twelfths. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I've got to have three, I got twelve twelfths plus three more. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to divide this. This is going to be my hole right here. One hole. And I'm going to divide this into twelve parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it in half. Okay. And then I'm going to divide these into six parts. Okay. So they're going to have to be kind of small. So I've got two, three, four, five, six. Now I didn't draw six lines. I drew one, two, three, four, five lines. So I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six parts. Okay, so this is five lines to make six parts. So two, three, four, five. So now I should have 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then I have to do 3 down here. So now I can go back and count and I'll have 15. Okay, so again, I'm going to do my fast shade on this so you don't have to watch me color. All right, so we're going to shade all of them. And now we just have to go back and label. Okay, so I get to group 8 of these together. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is eight twelves, and then I'm going to do three of them. Three twelves, and then I'm going to do four. Four twelves. Okay, so this is one hole plus three more. So actually this goes all the way down to here. All right, so now let's try G and H. Now you're going to notice they did this as a mixed number, but don't be afraid of the mixed number. It's just like what you've already been doing. So let's go ahead and draw our tape diagram. So we have one whole plus we have two thirds. So let's go ahead and make our whole first. Now these are thirds, so I'm going to have two thirds left over. So I'm going to actually make this about like this, okay? So this is going to be my whole. And I know that these have to be divided into three parts because these are thirds. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide this into three parts like this. This is three thirds or one whole. And I'm going to come down here and divide this into two parts. So now I have one whole and two thirds. All right, so we have to shade. So let's come back here and lightly shade. And then I'm going to label them. So this has been divided into one. So this is one whole, and then over here I've got two-thirds, one and two-thirds, okay? All right, last one. So let's draw our tape diagram again. Okay, so this time I'm dividing this into eighths, and I know this because it's one and five-eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and make my whole. It's, since it's five-eighths, I'm going to divide it about right down here. I'm going to go ahead and make this my whole. And I'm going to divide my hoe into eight parts. So I can divide it into half. And then I can divide it into fourths like this by dividing each half in half. So now I've got four parts, but I need eight. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to divide each of these in half. So now I have eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I need to make five more. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say that's two parts three parts, four parts, five parts. I'm going to count, make sure I have five. One, two, 
three, four, five. So again, let's shade. The hardest part of this lesson is dividing these tape diagrams, but I promise you, be patient with yourself. You are going to get really good at drawing tape diagrams, but you do need to go back and make sure you count and that you have enough boxes and that you're not just drawing lines. Okay, so now we're going to decompose this as one. So let's go ahead and take all eight of these and call this one, and then we're going to do one eighth and one eighth. So we've got one eighth and then one eighth and then we have three eighths. Okay, so this is decomposing fractions using addition sentences. Here's a sum of unit fractions. We divided each of these parts is a unit and they are all equal. These are the unit fractions. Here is where we come up with our sentence, our number sentence, and when we decompose is when we broke them apart, okay? Now, when you get ready to do your exit slip, make sure that you come back and revisit your journal and come back and revisit this problem set because it will help you along the way.